welcome back to Drum Electric. So in this video we are going to be setting up a backing track with just our phones. We don't need anything fancy, we don't need a big main stage rig or an Ableton rig, just our phones and like one cable and one little box thing. This rig is amazing if you don't have a drum pad or it's one of those festival changeovers where you've got like 15 minutes and everyone is bombarding the stage and everyone's asking questions and no one knows what's going on and you're playing in three minutes and this is a good rig for those times. So we won't be using any fancy software or you don't need to download anything on your phone or even buy an expensive piece of equipment. We're gonna be using all of the stuff that you can find on your phone or your tablet. This setup will mean that you'll only have click in your ears and you'll send the front of house the main mix. And it's really, really easy to set up and something I've used for years before I got into Ableton and main stage and that kind of thing. If you are looking for a slightly more complicated setup where you've got stereo backing tracks and you can send other band members the click, then please feel free to check out my video up here on how to set up a backing track project with main stage. So, onto the equipment list. The things you'll need are almost offensively simple. So you'll need a playback device, in my case this is an iPhone, but you can use an iPad or any other tablet that you have that you can play music back on. Some people use an MP3 player. As long as you can play music back on it, then it's fine. The other thing you'll need is a personal mixer. Now you can have one of these, which is the Behringer, 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 focus, there we go. It's called the P1. It's a little in-ear monitoring system and it's actually really good. So you've got two XLRs on the back and then you've got two control knobs. I'll get into it in a bit. It's really simple, really cheap and really robust. It's made out of metal and I've dropped it so many times on the gig. <laughs> you also can use a little mixer that has four inputs, for example. I just like this because I can attach it to the bottom of my drum stool and it's, it's just there. You'll also need a jack cable, a jack to stereo XLR, make sure you get one that's split between two and also if you have an iPhone make sure you get the dongle as well because Apple. And then you'll just need headphones and that's it. The headphones I use are the Shure 215s, really nice and easy, I've had them for years, I think I'm on my third pair now because they've broken over the years, not because of Shure but because like I've had the cable run down the front you have the drumstick that whacks them out the ears, rips out the... Anyway, they're really good if you're looking for that nice mid-range in-ear system. But you can use anything that you like. So setting up the track is actually really easy. I'll be using audio from Epidemic Sound, so we don't have to battle with royalties and stuff like that. But for you guys, it'll be whichever personal project you're using it for. So if you're in a band scenario, you'll be taking your band stems. And if it's a backing track, then taking out the drums and stuff like that. I tend to have whatever it can't be on stage, so if the song has horns or strings and we can't fit them on stage or they can't make the gig, then I'll have just the track with horns and strings on it to fill in those gaps. So once you've got your track, now it's just a case of setting up the click with it. So I've already gone ahead and done this so you don't have to watch me do it, but all I've done is I've just lined up the track with the click, so the tempo on this one's 117, I've lined it up and then put in an instrument track. Now this instrument track is just Logic's built-in sampler. It's just on the percussion, orchestra kit, and then I've got the clave sample. I have taken off all of the external effects like delay and reverb because I don't need that. I've also set it to be an eighth note click, but just because I prefer it, uh, and the reason why I use the instrument track is because I can have whatever I want on it. So if I want it an eight note click the whole time, I can. If I want a different sound, I can all of that stuff. So my click sounds like this. Nice and simple. So if you're working with stems from your band or you've recorded the song, then it's most likely that your song has already been recorded to a click. If this is the case, then all you need to do is add that instrument track and just use whatever click sound you want. I tend to do one bar of click and then loop it, as you can see in my project, makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier. If you wanna feel extra fruity, then you can also lob in vocal cues in there as well. So you can go verse, two, three, four, have fun sampling that. But things like that, just to keep you on track so you know where you are. I use them as well, uh, but for this project, I won't be 
just because. So all together, this is what the track sounds like with Click. It's a pretty nice track, it's grooving, it's a good time. Now that's the whole band mix. So what I want to do is take out all of the stuff that I'm playing because I'm not playing with the band in this video. So in this case, I'm just gonna mute that drum track and this is what it's gonna sound like. <laughs> So for you, it depends on what instruments you have and what instruments are going to be on stage that you mute and take out. Usually it's the normal band thing, so drums, bass, guitar, one of the keyboards, and then the rest is there. But customise that to whichever you need. So from here, all I'm going to do is pan the click one way and the rest of the tracks the other way. So I'm going to put click on left and then the tracks on the right side. If you're working with stems, then be careful of the effects. So if you've got reverbs and delays and stuff like that, what tends to happen is those are in stereo. So when you pan everything, those effects will stay in stereo. So you'll get a little bit of bleed on the other side. So just make sure that you either export all of the tracks first before putting it to click, or that all of those buses are panned as well. So let's just check that the clicks on one side and the tracks on the other. I think we're all good. So once that's all ready, then we can just export this track as one, and then we can get it imported to our device of choice. So once that's all exported, I'm just gonna check now that the export is exactly what I want it, just in case there are any problems, because you don't wanna export it to your phone and get set up behind the kit and it's wrong. So have a quick listen just before you get it on your phone. So now just import it onto your phone. For me, like I said, an iPhone, so it'll go into my music app. But whatever you're using, whether that be an MP3 player, an old iPod, a tablet, whichever thing you're using, just get it exported onto there, onto whichever music app that you use. Okay, so once you're on your device of choice, then it's heading to wherever you imported it. So for me, on an iPhone, I just imported it with uh, what was iTunes, but is now the music app, and I've just put it onto a playlist called Tracks. For me, if this was the gig, I would name that gig that and put the set list, like set one, set two, for example, whichever you find best. For me, it's just Track 01 Stems Demo. That's all I'm gonna do is hit play, check it works, which it does, and we're good to go. So from here, once you've done that, then we're gonna grab our cable, our little dongle, and we're gonna lob it into the bottom on our phone. Chuck that down for a second. And then with the other end, you've got two, two sides of the XLR. Red usually means right, red for right, and white is left, left for white. So for me, I put the click on my left side, so I'm going to stick this one into my P1. So just input left, doesn't really matter which one. And then this XLR is gonna to go to the front of house. So I'm going to give this to the sound engineer. They're gonna take it as an input with the drums and they've got the main track. Before you do this, remember to check that this is actually the click and this is the backing track so you know exactly which one. I recommend labeling up the cable because it just makes it a lot easier. The other thing is if you are using the Behringer P1, Behringer, Behringer, eh, let me know in the comments if that's Behringer or Behringer. I don't know which one it is. But if you're using this one, if you look on the front where the two knobs are, there's a little button that says stereo and mono. Make sure that's clicked in to mono because that means that these will become two inputs. If it's in stereo, then this will be a stereo input and then input left will be panned to the left and input right will be panned to the right, which you probably don't want. You might, but it means that your, le your left ear will just have click and then your right one will just have the front of house feed which might not be ideal. So just make sure that's clicked in for mono. If you're using a little mixer, then it depends how you've set it up. It's usually really simple that each track is a mono track, so you shouldn't have that problem. But just a heads up if you're using the P1. And it is as easy as that. That is our backing track rig set up and ready to go. As an extra side note, don't forget to buy batteries for your P1. They're only nine volt, or you can find a plug for it because you don't want this to lose power at a gig. I should, I speak from experience. Please remember to like and hit that subscribe button for all of our shiny new videos and I will see you 
in the next one. <laughs> <laughs>